Hi, 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 and hello. My name is Cole McCormick. I am the internet's biggest Godzilla nerd, and today I'm ripping off Anthony Fantano pretty much beat for beat by doing a let's argue type of video. I asked you in a community post here on YouTube for your hot takes on the Godzilla franchise and you delivered. So let's just go over them right now. This is one um, from Brian Griffin with a really um, questionable profile picture. Shin Godzilla and Godzilla Minus One don't need sequels. I hate how everything needs to be a trilogy or a cinematic universe. Whatever happened to standalone movies? Yes, this is one of the best takes I've seen in this entire comment section. 100%. I can't stand how fans have been clamoring for a Shin Godzilla sequel or a Godzilla Minus One sequel. I think they work perfectly fine as standalone movies. One of my favorite Godzilla movies is Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack, and it is a perfect standalone movie. Look at the original Godzilla movie. It's a great standalone movie. Have there been sequels of it? Sure. But my biggest thing is, is when you look at the story that's being told, I don't think you need a sequel. And that's really the thing. When it comes to sequels, the determining factor of whether or not you should continue the story is do we need to continue the story? You look at the original Star Wars trilogy, and after the first Star Wars movie, uh, the Empire's still out there. Like, yeah, you know, the Death Star blew up, but Darth Vader is still alive, so we gotta kind of wrap up some of those loose ends. 100% yes, make a sequel. And sure, Minus One ends on a cliffhanger, and Shin Godzilla ends with that last shot of the mutated Godzilla's almost about to come out of the tail, but I feel like that's just the themes of the film continuing on. Talking about Minus One specifically, Godzilla surviving is just, hey, Koichi's guilt and trauma is still going to be with him for the rest of his life. It's not like, oh, because Godzilla's dead now, his trauma is gone. No, he's gonna be very messed up for the rest of his life, but at least now there's like a light at the end of the tunnel. And with Shin Godzilla, it's supposed to basically showcase that, yeah, this was gonna keep going, he was gonna keep evolving, but they stopped him in time, but for how long? Like, that's that adds on to the horror. It, it keeps it ambiguous, and I like that. I like the idea of, oh man, in my mind, this is what happened. Or, oh, in this person's mind, this is what happened. It just makes it more interesting. If you make a sequel, it would just show off and pretty much ruin the horror of it all. Uh, so anyways, sorry for the quick ramble. Yes, 100% agree. This one's from D's Nuts 2007. Power scaling is a dumb concept. Hypothetical battles are determined by one factor, the writer of the story. It's a pointless debate to say, oh, Godzilla would destroy Gamera because there's no way of really having a meaningful discussion about it. Stan Lee has a great quote about this. The person who'd win in a fight is the person that the screenwriter wants to win. He gives the example of Spider-Man fighting the Thing and says, if I want Spider-Man to win, he'll win. If I want the Thing to win, he'll win. I agree 100%. There were a lot of comments in this hot take thread about, you know, oh, Space Godzilla would wipe out this monster or Kong would beat Destroya. And... I think that's stupid. I think all like these debates around that concept just doesn't interest me at all. I like talking about the filmmaking of these movies. I like talking about the themes, the storytelling. That's what's interesting to me personally. I don't think it's interesting to be like, oh, this fictional thing would destroy this fictional thing. Because at the end of the day, whoever's writing the story uh, determines that outcome. You might disagree with me, but you know, like if the screenwriter wants Manda to beat Godzilla, then Manda's gonna beat Godzilla. I just can't get behind the whole, this version of Godzilla would destroy this version of Godzilla. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't fascinate me at all. It just seems kind of dumb. Um, so I, I agree with this person, yeah. Power scaling is really stupid and it's a waste of time. Also, it leads to like unnecessary toxicity too. In the Godzilla subreddit, there are people that just like argue and like send death threats over power scaling and it's like, guys, it's not that deep. This is just really stupid. It just seems like playground banter more than anything of like, oh yeah, well, um, Batman would beat Superman. Like, it. who cares? Who cares? <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. The first one here is from Therapy Dino, and they say, 2014 had the best soundtrack. Uh, I'm assuming, you know, Godzilla 2014, you're talking about the score by Alexandre Desplat. And if 2019... King of the Monsters didn't exist, assuming we're only talking about American movies here. 
Uh, I would agree. I do think that Bear McCreary's uh, King of the Monsters is the definitive Godzilla soundtrack if we're talking, again, just American movies. However, Alexandre Desplat's score is absolutely incredible. The music that plays during the opening credits uh, are just bone chilling. I get goosebumps just thinking about them. Uh, so you know what, I'm gonna say solid take. But I do think King of the Monsters is better. Firewood Media has never seen a Godzilla movie and just reads Wikizilla articles. This is actually true. Uh, I hate Godzilla. All the movies are garbage. Uh, it's just a guy in a rubber suit destroying fake buildings. Like, it's just terrible. Um, I've never seen a movie. I've never collected any of the toys. It's honestly just a big waste of time. I'm only in it really for the views and for the money. And if I'm being honest, in like a month from now, I'm probably gonna stop making these videos and start doing like poppy playtime videos and uh, like skibbity toilet reviews. So stay tuned for that. Mongo from Shrek 2 as a kaiju, as well as the giant goose from Shrek Forever After. Honestly, I think that if you wanna claim something as a kaiju, uh, go for it. It just has to be a strange beast. Dai Kaiju is a giant strange beast, so if you really wanna make that claim, uh, go for it. Gabara is an underrated kaiju. Yes! 100% <laughs> I agree. Gabara deserves to have more of a spotlight in a future project. Uh, the electrical powers, the way that Gabara looks of being this ogre, uh, I like that Gabara doesn't have a tail. I think that makes him even more unique. So 100%, yes, Gabara is a very, very underrated kaiju. 100%, uh, very good take, I agree. I like Godzilla X Kong The New Empire more than Minus One. It's my perfect Godzilla movie, probably my favorite of all time. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, your opinion. Uh, you do say it's your perfect Godzilla movie. That's what you want in a Godzilla movie. And, you know, more power to you. Uh, me personally, I completely disagree. I think that while New Empire is fun, I think that Minus One just tells a better story, which at the end of the day, that's what film is about. It's about telling compelling stories. And on top of that, I think that Minus One is just a better representation of the character of Godzilla. And Godzilla X-Kong, he's kind of just a background character. It's almost like he's barely in the movie and he's more or less just a cameo. It's basically King Kong versus Scar King with a cameo by Godzilla, which is okay. It doesn't need to be, but my problem is, is with this specific take, this person did say that it's their perfect Godzilla movie, and I would have to disagree. He's a cameo in this. It, there's not enough focus on Godzilla for it to really be a Godzilla movie. I think if you do like this aesthetic and this style, then definitely check out some of the Showa era movies, especially ones where there's more of a presence and more of a focus on Godzilla for sure. But yeah, no, I, I gotta disagree on this one. Minus one is better than New Empire. Just because it's a better representation of the character of Godzilla. The human characters are actually interesting and they're actually characters that you care about. And it's not just a big dumb popcorn flick. Not that Godzilla movies can't be big dumb popcorn flicks, but talking strictly film here, yeah, Minus One is the superior film. Kong Skull Island as a whole is the best MonsterVerse film. It's not my favorite, and there are aspects where other films in the MonsterVerse excel, but it's the most complete film in a total package sense. I actually agree. Uh, I do think, though, that King of the Monsters is the best MonsterVerse movie. However, I think that when you break it down to objectively, what is the best film, what is the best movie in terms of just like filmmaking and storytelling and characters and all that stuff, then yeah, Kong Skull Island is the best. It's extremely well paced, it's extremely well structured, and the soundtrack is incredible, the characters are very memorable, the performances are really good. I just think that it doesn't get enough credit because it isn't really like the other MonsterVerse movies. It's almost like the black sheep of the bunch. In fact, I've seen box sets of DVDs or Blu-rays where Skull Island is just not on it. It's just Godzilla, then it's King of the Monsters, and then Godzilla vs. Kong. So yeah, Skull Island is, in my opinion, the most underrated MonsterVerse, and it's debatably the best. It's, at least for me, it's up there with King of the Monsters. Uh, some days I'll kind of go on and off where it's 
it's there, it's not, but yeah, it, it's it's a really, really great movie. Showa era is the best era. I actually like that we finally have a take that's about, you know, the older movies and not just the new stuff. I actually agree, but I think that a lot of this has to do with nostalgia. My opinion is whatever your favorite era of Godzilla is, is the era that you grew up watching the most. That's my personal theory. So for me, I watched Godzilla vs. Hedora a ton, like way too much as a kid. That one and Terror of Mechagodzilla. For some of the older Godzilla fans out there, you might remember these, they were like silver DVD cases and they had very specific Godzilla movies from the Showa era in this like box set. The reason why I'm bringing this up is most of those movies were at my local library. So those were the ones that I got to see the most. I would catch some on like TNT's Monster Vision or Turner Classic Movies, but beyond that, all I really got to see growing up was the Showa era movies. Obviously, as I got older, I watched all of them. In my formative years, it was definitely the Showa films that I watched the most. As a result, it's my favorite. I feel like kids growing up now are going to say, yeah, the Reiwa slash Legendary era is going to be my favorite. Or, you know, you'll get people that are like, I grew up with the Trendmasters toys, so the Heisai era is my favorite. 100% valid. Like I said, a lot of this is subjective, but in my own opinion, I agree with this person. The Showa era is the best era. Wish is Disney's worst movie. Um, have you ever seen Song of the South? Because, uh, yeah, that's Disney's worst movie. All right, this one is from my IRL buddy, Ethan. Uh, A24 isn't the prestigious company cinephiles want you to think it is. On top of their poor marketing practices and refusal to give a good amount of their movies a wide release, something that can and will make people lose interest in a movie, they've been overpricing some of their products. The $70 4K of Stop Making Sense first comes to mind and have started dabbling in AI-generated art. Despite these things, people are willing to turn a blind eye, all because they made some really good movies. In my opinion, Neon is doing a better job at being the top indie studio. While their catalog is more hit or miss, it feels like they have more variety than A24, and more importantly, they don't revel in their fame as much as A24 does. So first and foremost, uh, I do have to agree, I think that Neon has been putting out much better movies in recent memory. Uh, their new Long Legs movie looks really interesting. Me and Joe were just talking about that a couple days ago. Yeah, no, $70 for a Blu-ray is insane. Uh, that That's like AAA video game prices, which by the way, video games, they should not be 70 bucks. That's nuts. Anyways, 70 bucks for a Blu-ray is crazy to me. I can't fathom that, even for 4K. I think the most I've ever paid on a Blu-ray was maybe $30, and even then I was kicking myself for it. Um, I did buy the Godzilla Criterion box set, and that was like 120 bucks. and for me that was just like, oh god, I regret this decision immediately. I'll make a video on that later. Anyways, uh, you know what? I do think, though, that A24, um, they've kind of been soured for me recently. I'm not a huge fan of the AI art thing with Civil War. I'm someone who's not, like, militant against AI art, but when you're A24, you can absolutely afford to hire an artist to make those posters. Um, those posters just also just weren't good, and you can kind of tell, even if it wasn't AI, they're just not good posters. So, I don't know. I'm someone where I run an independent production company. That's technically what Firewood Media is. I've put out original movies, and... We've used posters where we hired artists. So what I'm getting at is, if we can do it, people who make stuff with little to no money, then a massive company like A24 can absolutely hire artists. I do think though with A24, it does worry me because they have talked about in recent years how they're going to be expanding out to more franchises. Like apparently they're making a Friday the 13th show and all that weird stuff. And to me, that just doesn't interest me. Uh, what I like about A24 is that they take very strange stories that are independently produced and then they distribute them or they help produce it. Um, either way though, yeah, I just haven't been on the A24 train recently. And I think part of that has to do with these practices, like you said. Everything Everywhere All at Once is a terrible movie and is overhyped by millennials who are obsessed with blaming all of their problems in life on the BS concept of generational trauma. So I agree with this, uh, except for the weird part at the end that seems kind of off. I don't like Everything Everywhere All at Once. I watched it in theaters. I thought it was terrible. 
and I'll make a video on it later, kind of going more in depth, because this is just sort of a quick thing here. Yeah, no, I thought it was that weird, uh, so random humor from like 2012, uh, where it's like narwhals, but with bacon. Like that type of humor is kind of like what that whole movie feels like to me. Uh, it just kind of feels like Reddit the movie. Uh, there's all this like existential nihilism and it just, it's not for me. I, I know that a lot of people really connected with it and that's cool. I know that a lot of people were happy that it won best picture. Uh, that's all good. I think that Ki Hoi Kwan was fantastic in it. Uh, but you know, beyond that, it just wasn't a great movie. I didn't like it. I know that you know, a lot of people did. Um, yeah, basically in this comment here, there's like two different like videos I could make for the channel. Uh, for starters, it's you know why I didn't like everything ever all at once, but also why I don't like generational trauma as a theme in movies. I think that it's very overplayed. Uh, we've seen that a lot lately in a lot of like Pixar movies. Um, I don't know, it's just something that I don't like because it's just so played out and it doesn't really appeal to a lot of people in my opinion. This channel was better when it was about folk filmmaking and you showcasing your movies. I hate the stupid Godzilla stuff. Go back to making movies. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, for those of you that may not really know much about this channel pre, you know, the Dr. Skipper video, um, I, I make movies. I still do. I don't know why this person thinks I don't. I used to make videos that were like, hey, here's a making of one of my movies. Um, and then I'd not really post at all. Like I'd, I'd post like once every like three months and it would just be, I'd post a new movie and then I'd make a making of, and then that was it. I started to do film criticism videos and like video essays around like 2022. One, I want to say, uh, yeah, October 2021. So this person I'm assuming has been a very early subscriber, which don't get me wrong, you know, thank you for uh, watching me for this long. But I do have to say, like, I am still making movies. I'm actually working on a screenplay right now. Uh, I'm getting ready to film my next feature film in like two days. Uh, on top of that, too, these videos, these Godzilla videos that I make, first off, I love making them, don't get me wrong, but on top of that, uh, the ad revenue money that I make from these videos, I'm able to put into my movies so that they can be better and bigger. But saying, you know, go back to making just movies is kind of counterproductive because I'm able to make movies because of these videos. It, it kind of works in both ways. And it's a win-win for me because I like making movies and I like Godzilla videos. The creator deserved to win the Oscar for best VFX over Godzilla Minus One. Yeah, it's impressive what Minus One was able to do with 35 VFX artists, but the creator just looks so much better. Several shots in Minus One look downright atrocious. At the end of the day, it's about quality and not the quantity of artists. Part of me agrees because the creator does look absolutely phenomenal. It's a gorgeous movie, and if I'm being honest, if Minus One didn't come out, the creator would have been my favorite movie of 2023. Uh, but that being said, part of me is just like, Godzilla Minus One is such a feat. And not even talking about just how many VFX artists were in it, but there are some shots in Minus One that look like God tier. They look so realistic. The shot of Godzilla in the water with the mine in his mouth. I swore that was real. I swore they just built a practical Godzilla head. It turns out they didn't. The water simulation in that movie is so good. It's it's so good. So while I do think, yeah, you know, quality over quantity, and in this case, it's less people worked on it, um, I, I kind of get what you're saying, but I have to disagree, ultimately. Not because it's Godzilla, but just because the visual effects there were just fantastic. Were there some bad shots? Yeah, but... That movie is batting like 800 when you consider all the other bad shots. Godzilla vs. Gigan to Godzilla vs. Megalon are watchable schlock. I agree. I mentioned this in my Dr. Skipper video that there are movies and eras of Godzilla that are, yes, objectively bad, but that doesn't mean that they're not like unwatchable. Godzilla vs. Gigan and Godzilla vs. Megalon are movies that you can totally just put on at a party and have people watch and laugh at, but also, you can appreciate it for just being really solid kaiju movies in terms of the special effects. Like, I will always love the scene where Megalon and Gigan have that like ring of fire around Godzilla and Jet Jaguar and they're sort of back to back. It looks awesome. The amount of work that went into those movies, regardless of their quality, uh, I'll always just appreciate. So uh, basically though, yes, I agree with this person. Uh, yeah, they, they, it's watchable schlock for sure. That's probably the best way to put it. Kiryu Goji is a way better design than Godzilla 2000. You can't convince me otherwise. I mean, here's the thing. 
I think that both designs work really well. The Millennium Era pretty much had no misses when it came to Godzilla designs. Every single one was fantastic in its own right. Godzilla 2000, the best part about it is that it's a little bit green with those purple spikes. It's very eye-catching. I'm someone that loves that color palette of like purple and green or like purple and teal, which is why the channel, you know, icon is purple and teal. But with Godzilla 2000, I... I kind of agree. I think that Kiryu Goji might be the best. Uh, specifically, I like the Tokyo SOS Godzilla because I love that giant scar on its chest. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is overrated AF. It just makes the lore of the Heisei era confusing and has some of the most dull characters in a Godzilla movie ever. For the most part, I would agree. My biggest issues with Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah stem from the time travel, which this person is talking about, as well as the World War II stuff, which is kind of interlinked with the time travel. I think that the World War II depictions, um, kind of not good. <laughs> I say that not just as an American, but just as someone who knows history, and I feel like depicting... Japanese soldiers that way in a heroic sense uh, is kind of messed up. I'll be making a video on this movie, by the way, that's more in depth and talks more about my feelings on this. But basically, um, I agree, it is overrated. I think if it wasn't King Ghidorah and it was some other monster, then it wouldn't be as well regarded by fans. The special effects are incredible, don't get me wrong. Mecha King Ghidorah is cool. I kind of like the Futurians, I just wish that more was done with them. Uh, but yeah, I gotta agree 100%. Uh, it's very overrated, and the time travel completely messes with the continuity of the Heisei era and just overcomplicates everything. Uh, having multiple timelines is always stupid. Just look at the X-Men Fox movies. This is from an account uh, named Smosh Assassin's Creed 3 Rap, and they said the Smosh Assassin's Creed 3 Rap song is better than the Smosh Assassin's Creed 4 punk song. And I agree. I forgot that the Assassin's Creed 4 punk song even existed. Um, it's not very funny. It's not very good. I do think that the rap one is better. Um, it's also just a better song. Like, I get chills whenever I see the music video and I see Ian from Smosh come in as George Washington. It's like the coolest shit ever. Um, so, yeah. Again, like, we're talking about film and Godzilla. But you know what? Yeah, Smosh Assassin's Creed 3 rap. Um... Kino, uh, five stars on Letterboxd, why not? All right, this is a bit of a long one, so uh, here we go. Yes, I know and understand that Mothra and Godzilla have a symbiotic relationship. It is a natural occurrence that is different from anything we would recognize as romantic or even friendly relationship. It is simply mutually beneficial alliance that both parties have maintained for who knows how long. I would never even utter anything even assembling the idea that Godzilla and Mothra are a thing in the MonsterVerse. However, as cringe as it may be, um, and basically that's kind of the idea is this person is um, very much against the idea of Godzilla and Mothra being a, a thing. And I have to agree, I think that stuff is just gross. <laughs> Like, they're two different species, and on top of that, it's just, like, weird. Yeah, no, I, I do think it is really stupid. Uh, I mean, if you're into that, I mean, hey, um, go crazy. Uh, I th oh, no, that sounds wrong. Anyways, um, yeah, it's weird. I don't like it. Uh, no bueno. Final Wars is overrated. It gets old real fast when Godzilla bodies everyone until the final fight. You can have him win every fight, just actually make it a struggle and don't have so many. Even in Godzilla x Kong, they still have him struggle a bit in every fight, but the end was fire though. Godzilla Final Wars is a movie that I definitely love. I watched it a ton as a kid, and as a result, I am very defensive over it, but in my opinion, it feels more like a Godzilla tribute film than anything else. It's basically the greatest Godzilla fan film ever made. So, I uh, disagree. I, I like that there isn't a struggle. I like that he's just going around just like a slasher villain, just wiping everyone out. That's cool. I think if there was a struggle, it would have been a bit off because the movie would have been like three hours long then. Each fight lasts only a few seconds for a reason. It's to show that he's the king of the monsters. I'm glad that the Zilla fight is just basically a shit post of a fight where he kills him almost instantly. Uh, there are fights where he struggles. I have to disagree with this person there. Uh, Godzilla, Angurus, Rodan, King Caesar, that fight. Even then, uh, he does struggle at a few points, uh, specifically against, like, Kamanga. Like, he does get covered in those webs and... It ain't looking good for him, but obviously, you know, it's Godzilla Final Wars. He's going to still wipe out Kamanga. So, disagree. Um, overrated, I would actually argue it's quite underrated. I've heard a lot of people dunk on that movie. Uh, 
but I love it. I think it's great. Uh, this one's from Kaijuzilla621, which is the creator of Godzilla Apex, so shout out to them. Most Godzilla Heisai movies, aside from 84 and Biollante, are boring because of their similar structure and overdrawn slow battles. I would actually agree with this. I do think that there are a lot of highlights in the Heisai movies as opposed to lowlights. But yeah, a lot of the fights do end up just becoming like just beam battles and it gets pretty boring pretty quickly. Uh, Godzilla vs. Mothra, Battle for Earth comes to mind. That one is probably one of my least favorite Godzilla movies of that era. Uh, but Godzilla vs. Destroyer has some pretty cool moments. Um, I, I love the fight where Destroyer drags Godzilla Jr. through the city. So, I agree. I do think, though, that while it does have the reputation of there's a ton of beam battles, there are still some really fantastic fight scenes. Uh, but yeah, when it's bad, it's it's pretty bad. The Gamera Heisai trilogy is 100% way better than the Godzilla Heisai movies. Someone probably mentioned that in here as one of their hot takes. Uh, so preemptively kind of latching that onto that, uh, I agree. It, it, those Gamera movies are 100% better than the Godzilla Heisai ones. This one was very controversial. Uh, the idea of Godzilla being a tragic character in the Heisai series is stupid, and Mickey is the true villain of the Heisai series. I disagree. I like when Godzilla is a tragic character. I think it works with who Godzilla is. He didn't ask to be created. He, he just kind of suffers. That's why I like Shin Godzilla so much. It just works with the character. I also like the characterization of Godzilla in the Heisai series because he is like an anti-hero where he only fights the monsters that are gonna, you know, kill him and probably destroy Earth. So he really, like, he still destroys cities, which I like, but he's still a hero when he needs to be. In my opinion, that's like the best characterization of Godzilla. Um, I, I have to disagree. Mickey's also a great character, not a villain. So I, I disagree. I think this is a, a very bad take. And uh, I know a lot of people... I've been kind of rallying you up in the comments with this. There's like 10 replies. Um, but no, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to disagree. Varen is an overrated monster. So apparently there's Varen defenders, which is really funny. Someone under this even replied being like, Varen is better than Godzilla. Um, my question to that person that said that Varen's better than Godzilla, what has Varen done exactly to be better than Godzilla? Um, Varen the Unbelievable is a terrible movie. Uh, the Japanese version and the American version are both awful. Like, it's legitimately a bad movie. Uh, if you defend it, I'm convinced you actually haven't seen it because it's a very slow movie that feels like it's made for TV. On top of that, Varen just isn't really an interesting monster and hasn't had an opportunity to do much in the spotlight. Uh, he shows up in Destroy All Monsters for like two seconds, and that's it. I would like to see Varen come back to some degree and do something cool, but as of right now, uh, Varen is hardly even a character. So I don't really understand how one could say that he's better than Godzilla. Uh, but yeah, so to basically uh, respond to the initial post, um, yeah, I agree. Uh, Varen is very overrated. I had no clue people even liked Varen. I, I thought he was just kind of like a joke monster. Shin Godzilla is overhated by fans and is a fantastic movie, one of the best in the franchise. I'm convinced people only say they hate it so that they can look cool. I would be willing to bet everything I own that people are going to turn on minus one in a few years because it will be the cool thing to do. Unfortunately, yes, you're 100% right. Um, yeah, people are going to start saying that minus one was terrible and that it's one of the worst in the franchise and it's boring because that's what they're doing right now to Shin Godzilla. I genuinely don't know how someone can watch Shin Godzilla and hate it. Um, it it's objectively one of the best. Uh, for me, it's minus one is like in my top three up there with Shin Godzilla and GMK. Like those are like my big three. So I, I'll make a video on Shin Godzilla, but yeah, no, I 100% agree with this person that as of right now, it's just cool to hate Shin Godzilla for some reason. It's kind of weird, actually. Um, that's sort of how a lot of things go, where something will come out, and then a few years later, it'll be like, oh, it's the worst thing ever. Like, people on Twitter are already turning on Dune Part 2, and that movie is fantastic. So uh, I, I don't know. I would, you know, kind of like uh, rebut some of the claims with Shin Godzilla being bad, but most of the claims that I see are just people saying it's boring, which I don't think is a very good critique of any movie. I think it's weird to say, oh, that's boring. Um, if you want to critique Shin Godzilla, you could say, well, the characters aren't good, uh, which I would disagree. The whole point of the movie is that they're not really characters. This is more of a critique on the government in and of itself and how slow they are to respond to tragedies. And the entire thing 
is very much like the original Godzilla, where it's reacting to a disaster that happened. So, to me, I just think that it works with what it was trying to do. And what it was trying to do was critique the Japanese government, but also deliver on a very interesting and compelling Godzilla movie, where Godzilla evolves throughout the film, and honestly made Godzilla scary again. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, this person is right. Uh, that's that's just the popular thing, and uh, minus one is going to be trashed soon uh, by people that don't really know any better. All right, that about wraps everything up. I just want to say thank you so much to the people that participated here on the community tab. If you are someone that wants to be in the next Let's Argue video, or if you want to determine what my next video will be, because I do polls where I say, hey, this is going to be the next video. You get to vote on which one you want to see. Uh, then subscribe. Uh, just go to the community tab here. You don't have to be a member or anything. You can just vote on the next video or, you know, comment in the Let's Argue thing and you might be in the next video. I'm really trying to build a fun community here uh, that's all about kaijus and Godzilla and stuff. Uh, I'm thinking the next Let's Argue is going to be a bit more focused where I'm going to say, hey, this is just about this or you know that so for example it might be this is only about Gamera or this is only about King Kong or this is only about the Heisei era and we'll kind of go from there so anyways I just want to say thank you so much for watching I'm Cole McCormick you're watching Firewind Media I'll see you in the next one again thank you thank you so much for all the support I really appreciate it peace out